So it's been about five months since the Pixel 3 was released, and as I'm sure a lot of you remember, its release was pretty bumpy. So I thought I'd take another look at it now that it's had some time to marinate, so to speak. Even with its not so clean slate, its bugs, performance issues, and design quirks, the Pixel 3 XL still found its way into my pocket as my main phone for a large portion of the past five months. Call me crazy, but here's why. Let's get the obvious out of the way. The cameras. The Pixel 3's cameras remain my personal top pick, and I think I can speak for a lot of people when I say this is still the best set of cameras for regular stills and selfies. And it continues to impress with its single rear-facing camera and Google's software wizardry. And yes, I know there are some people that actually don't like the way the pictures come out on the Pixel, but there's no denying the sharpness and the detail and the ease of getting a great shot, especially in portrait mode. And cameras aside, the Pixel 3 still has a number of things going for it. Its screen is still one of the best on an Android phone. The phone itself is made out of nice, solid, premium, good feeling materials. It's one of the only flagships left with dual front firing speakers. It's got the best haptics I've felt on an Android device. It's got a rear mounted fingerprint reader and people think I'm crazy for liking this, but hey, it's comfortable and it actually works. Then of course, it's got pure pure, stock, always up-to-date, pixelized Android, and all the things it has to offer like now playing, call screening, which I actually miss on other phones, it'll be the first to get Android Q, and unlimited backups to Google Photos in original quality. Alas, not even the cameras and the fact that it's running stock Android could save the Pixel 3 from providing a rather catastrophic experience for some people. Just wanted to take a moment to thank this video's sponsor, Skillshare, for supporting the channel and helping make these videos possible. Skillshare is this awesome site dedicated to helping people learn and boost their creativity. With over 25,000 different classes spread across categories such as design, photo and film, technology, entrepreneurship, gaming, marketing, and much more, you will be sure to find something that suits you. Skillshare is the perfect place to help you learn and sharpen skills for things like designing mobile applications or mastering Procreate on the iPad, which are both things I'm actually taking advantage of and really enjoying. For under $10 a month on an annual plan, you will get complete unlimited access to their full library of classes, which I think is an incredible deal. But not only that, the first 500 of you that use that first link down below in the description will get a free two month trial. So make sure you hop on that right away. Now, I'm sure you guys remember the myriad of problems and bugs that accompanied the 3XL during its launch. Multiple software and hardware issues, remember that extra notch, the tinny audio when recording video, awful RAM management, distorted audio playback, and things like that. But then, those things got fixed, for the most part. A couple software updates here and there seemed to iron out the experience a little bit. Too bad those updates couldn't fix the design of the phone, am I right? I don't think I really need to go into all that, but I'm pretty sure we can all agree this isn't the most aesthetically pleasing phone around. Now, in my experience, as time has gone on, things have worked out just fine. The design kind of disappeared and I was immersed into the rest of the phone. I was getting five to five and a half hours of screen on time, performance overall was pretty smooth, and everything just worked as it should with few hitches. And luckily, I can still say the same today. My Pixel 3 XL works just fine. On the flip side, however, others haven't been so lucky. A few tech reviewers and even some Pixel users within our Android Police family reported that their Pixels were not performing well. Reports, tweets, and articles surfaced with people saying that their Pixels began to lag. The fluidity disappeared, stutters and hiccups began popping up, applications would take their sweet time opening, especially the camera application, taking 5 to 10 seconds until able to snap a shot battery life went bad, and these things got so severe that it not only forced users to have to reboot the phone multiple times during the day, but some have even been forced to factory reset their phones or even completely switch to something else. It kind of makes you think back to the fact of the 3XL only having 4 gigs of RAM, and we all knew from the jump it was not a good idea for Google to do that. They tried to prove a point about Android, but they should have just played it safe and at least have gone with six. Now, of course, we got this software update for March, which directly targeted the camera among other things. It stinks that it took this long for it to come out, but better late than never, I suppose. So this should have fixed everything, right? Well, not entirely. 
The update did work for a lot of users, while others reported that they have continued to deal with poor performance, mainly from the camera. While these issues luckily do not affect the majority of users, they don't seem to be too widely spread, they're still pretty serious problems nonetheless. See, these are things you wouldn't or at least shouldn't have to expect from a phone running pure Android, right? Especially straight from Google itself. But the Pixel phone track record is just loaded with weird stuff from strange design language, both software and hardware issues, to device longevity going through the floor for some users. I know, it's Google's third phone, but I feel by by now they should have these fundamental things taken care of. So while my personal experience, along with the experience of many other Pixel 3 XL users, has been pretty good over the past 5 months and I haven't really had any glaring issues with mine, I can't excitedly recommend people go out and get a 3XL right now, especially with new 2019 phones starting to come out. I really wish I could. Sure, these issues aren't widespread, but it's not like I can guarantee that they won't happen to the next user. I can say that if by some miracle Google is able to truly, truly fix all of these issues, then yeah, I think it might be worth a look. You can find one in mint condition online for around 600 bucks, which I think is a good deal. What with all these thousand dollar phones popping up? Google's got some work to do. I'm remaining hopeful for their next smartphone attempt, and I expect it to be amazing. As for the three, well, let's just look at it as another stepping stone to what will hopefully be pixel perfection. So what are your thoughts on the Pixel 3 XL five months later? Do you have one? If so, let us know your experience with it so far and whether or not you'll be sticking with it or switching to something else. We'd love to hear your feedback. But anyway, that does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. Subscribe to the Android Police channel if you are new. That does it for me. I will talk to you guys later and thank you so much for watching.